Hi, hello, I am the Cyber Reef Guru. Thank you so much for watching. So I have been spending a tremendous amount of time out here in the garage making things for an upcoming craft fair that we have. And I have a couple tools that I have found essential to the process. And so today I thought I'd show you some of the tools, show you that they are only about $10 and they really enhance my workflow. And some of the tools I actually think are indispensable for what I'm doing here here in the garage. All right, let's go ahead and get on with the video. All right, before we get into the video, I just wanna have a quick conversation about the difference between inexpensive and cheap. So some of the tools that I am going to cover today are inexpensive and some of them are cheap. Inexpensive is a tool that does not cost a lot, but it provides great value and cheap, well, cheap is generally a tool that does not cost a lot and maybe might not have very much value. And value in this terms really means quality. And so I try to distinguish between things that I think that are inexpensive, which are tools that do not cost a lot of money, but provide great value relative to their price. And then things that are cheap. Cheap means lower quality lesser chance of survival over the long term. So just want to let you know going forward, inexpensive means high quality, low cost. Cheap means, generally speaking, low quality, low cost. Buyer beware. So the first tool that I want to cover here is something that I find completely indispensable for my specific workflow, especially when I'm making cutting boards, and that is CA glue. Now I happen to have the Starbond glue here, both in the thin and the medium variety. I like the thin to help stabilize the wood that might be a little punky, or if you get a split, you just put a little bit of thin in there, you hit it with the activator and it holds it together. I use the medium almost exclusively for filling the larger holes. I find that it flows a little bit better into the holes. It's not nearly as runny as the thin, uh, but it's not like the thick that you really want to use for a very large gap. This actually gets into the holes and allows you to get the job done. Now this Starbond glue right here is about $9.49 for a one ounce container. I do recommend if you are going to use a lot of it that you get the larger container because the volume cost is significantly lower. Now it is fairly expensive at over $15, uh, but like I said, if you're using a lot of it, I think it's totally worth it. So go out, check yourself out some Starbond CA glue. The next tool that I want to cover is something that is a little less traditional, but it is also a tool that I have found indispensable here in the garage while I'm doing prep work. And that is the use of chalk. In this case, sidewalk chalk. This is literally chalk that came from the dollar store that is used by kids or whomever to draw on sidewalks. But what I use it for is marking wood to rough dimensions. I also use it to write on the wood because it comes off very easily and it doesn't uh, bleed into the wood you don't have to sand it off so this specific bucket here like I said I got at the dollar store um, I did find some on Amazon which I will link below for two dollars and 98 cents it has a variety of different colors the one on Amazon does that maybe show will show up on wood a little bit better some of this chalk here is like the yellow specifically really only shows up on the darker wood. Uh, so I have a tendency to maybe use the orange or the green on uh, all different varieties of wood because it shows up better. The one on Amazon has mostly darker colors like purples and reds. So I think that might work a little bit more universally on wood, but nevertheless, go out and get yourself some sidewalk chalk. The third tool that I want to cover here is a tool that I actually got years and years and years ago, but I haven't been using it very much until recently because the reason I bought it, it doesn't work very well for. And so what it is, is one of these plastic spreaders here. Now I actually ended up buying a three pack from the big box store, uh, but I bought it to spread Odoi's oil on projects. And it does work great if your project is big, long, and flat. However, whenever I was trying to use it for projects that were uh, 
maybe not flat, had a lot of corners in it. Uh, the spreading ability, although it spreads well, it just can't get into those corners and clean the uh, hard wax out very well. So, but recently I've started using it with my cutting boards. And so what I do is when I dip my cutting boards in oil, let them soak for a little bit, I pull them out. In the past, I was taking some paper towels and I was drying all the oil off. And that generated a lot of wasted paper towels and it actually wasted a lot of the oil because it was now soaked into the paper towels instead of in the bucket where it needs to be. So I've started scraping my cutting boards with this, get all the oil off, it dries it almost completely. And then what I do is I take the cutting boards out and I just let them air dry for about 24 hours. And then there's very little oil left on them after that process. And so then I just grab one or two paper towels, wipe them down and we're good to go. So it just saves a tremendous number of paper towels. It saves a lot of oil. And so it's really amped up my ability to kind of uh, pound out some of these cutting boards a lot easier using the scraper. So I will leave a link down below. You can pick yourself up a three pack from Amazon for about $2.88. So it is quite the bargain. The next tool that I want to cover is something that I picked up years and years and years ago for an unrelated purpose to what I currently use it for, but I find it very useful in the garage and that is this hook and pick set. And so this one has a little 90 degree and this one is a hook and the other one has a little uh, tilt on it. I can't find it right now at the moment, which really bothers me because it's one of my favorite tools. Uh, but I use these to clean out knots and the occlusions in the wood uh, to remove bark and a variety of other things. So you can use them for lots of different purposes. Like I said, I didn't originally buy it to do woodwork, uh, but I found it very useful, especially now that we're doing a lot of work with live edge slabs, removing a lot of bark and other things. This really just helps the process tremendously. And so for only $6.49, you can pick yourself up one of these. So I highly recommend it. It's a great tool to have around for lots of different purposes. So the next tool that I want to cover kind of dovetails a little bit from the previous one. As I mentioned, we are working a lot with live edge slabs and with live edge slabs, you usually get a lot of bark on it. And then once you peel the bark off with a hammer and a chisel, for example, or if it's loose enough, you can just pull it off with your hand, you're left with some, uh, some stuff underneath the bark that needs to be removed. And so in many cases, I don't want to just aggressively sand it off. I want to remove it lightly and keep some of that natural character of the wood. So what I found is actually this this metal brush actually works really well for that purpose. It's got a little bit of a fine tooth structure and it's a little bit more flexible than some of the other brushes that I've seen in the wire wheels. So it doesn't scratch up the wood too much. It does still scratch up the wood though. So you still need to sand, but it doesn't gouge the wood out. It doesn't remove a lot of the features. And so this one I find really, really nice. Um, it's big too, so it's easy to handle. Alternatively, you can get those uh, smaller ones that come in uh, both a brass, a steel, and maybe a plastic uh, sort of variety as well. Uh, those actually work really well if you want to get into the, some of the smaller areas. And so I will leave a link to this specific brush. This is the one that I bought uh, down below as well. It is $3.68 on Amazon. So super affordable, super inexpensive. Well, those were the five tools that I recommend under $10 to really amp up your woodworking skills in the garage here. So if you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, give us a thumbs up anyway, but tell us why in the comments so we can make future videos better. If you're not already following me on Instagram, please consider doing so. That's where I post pictures of projects like this that come in future videos. If you have any other suggestions for additional tools that maybe are under $10 that might amp up your woodworking ability, please leave them down in comments below. I'd love to hear from you all and see what you guys are using in your wood shop. All right, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for getting this far. And don't forget to be inspired. Hmm. Me, 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 me. <clears throat> All right. Hi, hello. <laughs> the next tool that I want to discover. No, I'm not going to discover it. But nevertheless, go out and check out yourself some sidewalk chalk and get it on in your garage.